guy asked her if the, the black guy was her dad, and she mm. says, you know, yes, that's I've never stopped the question. <laughs> well, yeah, why she said she doesn't, and then she... When he asks her, is, are, is she African-American, and she says, she kind of pauses, mm. and she's like, I don't understand the question. Yeah, well, she's... But we'll put a clip. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... She just got caught pretty red-handed, didn't know what to say. <laughs> completely. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another episode of BSCV. I'm Shateria Marie. And I'm Edward Southwick. And on this episode, we will be having a discussion about Rachel Dolezal. For those of you who do not know who that is, Rachel Dolezal is the former president of the NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington. She recently resigned because the question of her ethnicity came into play. Is that your dad? Yeah, that's, that's my dad. This man right here is your father? Right there? Do you have a question about that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was wondering if uh, <laughs> if your dad really is an African-American man. That's a very, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're implying. Are you African-American? I don't, I don't understand the question of, I did tell you that yes, that's my dad. And you, he was unable to come in January. Are your parents, I'm are not, they white? I, I re, I re. Edward, what do you think of Rachel Dolezal? <laughs> well, I, it's kind of funny to even think we're, you know, talking about her and that she's made this big of news and everything. Um, it's obviously a person that has uh, got some issues. Yes. And uh, it, the way I look at it is that, you know, she, it's, it's okay uh, what she did as far as her work and things that seem to be useful in some aspects, but you know, lying to get there and the way she did it, uh, you know, that part's just not right. Yes. Some of the other discussion that's been thrown back and forth, I'm not sure if I fully agree on that, but I think the bottom line is that she was not honest about things and, and deliberately uh, deceived people. Yes, a lot of people are actually offended by the fact that she portrays herself as an African-American, but she's actually a white woman. And when I first saw her, I just thought it was a white woman with a tan, but apparently she's been able to pass as an African-American, which I guess as people, we would expect someone to be honest and, and we would expect someone to blatantly lie to us. So for them to accept that she was African-American when she wasn't was, they were just accepting her word for her word, but. And I think this is a, a deeper issue that I haven't noticed in talking too much about in the media. But you know, why in the world, when, when people would just see a picture of her, or if they didn't know that she was the president of the chapter uh, there, uh, of course they wouldn't most likely think that she was black. Mm -hmm. But when she would meet people and she branded, present herself that way, you know, she had her hair done and, and somewhat of a tan and everything, uh, people tend to believe uh, you know, things at face value uh, she was saying all the right things. She was even talking about her father being black and have pictures and different things like that. So people tend to believe it, even though their eyes are telling them something completely different. Yeah. This happens all the time in, in relationships and things else. You see someone and you can see problems and you see things that doesn't look right, but they're telling you something and you, the person tends to believe that fully and they get deceived so easily. And so I think society and people as individuals need to look a little bit at, you know, be a little more skeptical sometimes and don't take everything at face value and, you know, actions speak louder than words and, and what you're seeing, you know, don't let it conflict with uh, what, what a person's saying. I mean, if it conflicts, you might, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire <laughs> and you might want to check it out. So I think that's kind of a good lesson for a lot of people as well. A lot of people are really, really offended. More so her lies are mm. what got to me. She, there's so many lies that she spread apparently. She said she lived in a teepee. She was whipped with baboon straps by her parents in South Africa. She's never lived in South Africa. Um, it's just, yeah. it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, but but what's interesting, point to, sorry, interject there. You mentioned two things there. Of course, again, the deceitfulness and the lying that mm -hmm. she did, which is really you know, probably the, the major problem there. Um, her wanting to be like a, an African-American or anyone, you know, wanting to be like someone of another culture than that. There's nothing bad with that. In fact, that's, you know, emulation and that should be 
something that uh, you know is, is positive and is, you know glad that people would think enough of you or the culture to want to emulate it and be like it. It's just the way that she went about it, and you know the steepleness and, and that there. But yeah, there's a, a difference in uh, you know uh, a lot more people now, uh, whether it be hip hop or the different things uh, within African American uh, culture and that. Uh, it's becoming more worldwide, obviously, and uh, more popular, and a lot of people wanting to emulate that, you know, dance, song, rap, rap you know, a lot of different things. So that's a, a positive step, I think, in, in creation. It definitely is. Um, there was a CNN correspondent recently who, who spoke about whites taking on black culture, and he mentioned mm -hmm. Iggy Azalea, and he said she's taking the spot of uh, female black rappers, but like, she's not taking the spot of someone else. If someone wants that position, they should get to that point, I guess someone just felt like naturally that Iggy Azalea was a different form because she was a white woman as a rapper and they chose to sign her to the label, but I can't say she's taking the spot of anybody else, you know? Yeah, and it's, you know, sometimes things are maybe not fair or from a certain viewpoint, but basically producers and that, I mean, they're looking out for money and profit, yes. <laughs> and if they think someone is going to uh, fill a spot or, uh, you know, make them more profits and money and, and going to go over with the public, you know, they usually make decisions based more on that than they really do on necessarily, I, I think, whether it's, uh, you know, skin color, different things like that. I mean, everything would be taken into a factor. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they would just decide, uh, you know, whether or not it's profitable. Now, it isn't necessarily a good thing, but I don't know if it's, sometimes maybe we read a little bit too much into some of the things, that, those things, I think. Yeah, we do. I think, but with Rachel Dolezal, she's, she's getting quite a bit of publicity, though, and I mean, that could have possibly been her reason for doing it. I felt I was more than prepared for the ultimate catch, but nothing could prepare me for him. Is, is transracial a thing? Is, can it become a thing? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point here. And just to the point you mentioned before, uh, if she had this plan, I mean, it seems like she finally just got caught. Uh, but I mean, if there was some kind of a plan, or even if there wasn't, it certainly has made her very famous. Yes. And who knows, she may make a heck of, she probably already is making a lot of money now, um, interviews and everything. And, you know, I, I, you hate to think that she's going to become a, a millionaire, multi-millionaire because of this and through deception and everything, but sometimes that happens. It's not right. But, Sometimes that uh, works out that way. But she's also going to have a lot of, you know, like you mentioned, hate mail and different things like she that. Will. She's got to expect that and it comes with the territory. And, and, you know, what she did, you know, wasn't right in that. So, uh, but then onto the yeah, transracial and transgender, um, I think it's, you know, very different. Uh, mm -hmm. even, even the commitment level and, you know, one you can turn back from easily, another you cannot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, transferring from male gender to female gender or female to male, you know, is a huge thing involving operations and all bit. Transgender too, it's a whole total lifestyle, it's a full commitment. You can't just all of a sudden say, you know, next day I'm not transgender, or, or to become transgender. You've got to do a lot of things that would prove you are. I, I think kind of the commitment level with her, sure she did her hair and she did a few things like that. But, yeah, yeah. But I don't know, I don't think it's... She can obviously hmm. take the wig off and, you know, not really tan anymore, and she'd be able to classify herself as a white woman again. Oh yeah, yeah. I think a lot of women were, or people were offended because as black people, we wouldn't be able to just throw on a fake costume and say we're white all of a sudden, and for us people to believe us. So I guess that would be a big part of why people were offended by her. Uh, although it's, it's interesting though, because I mean, you would think, most people would think, you know, you couldn't look at her, just seeing the picture, not knowing anything about the background. Most people look at her and say, well, she's, she's not black. You know, she doesn't, whether it be eye color or even the skin color, or sure, the hair is curly in that, but, you know, she really, in features, she doesn't really look black. Yes. But she duped people into thinking she was. So I suppose that to someone, especially if they were lighter skin color that was African American, or maybe they were half, uh, and they went around and had their hair straightened and, and the whole bit and, and uh, did, the mannerisms, the talk, and everything of a, a typical, could be a white businesswoman or businessman, whatever. They probably could actually fool a lot think of people. So? It's, I think it could be possible because, again, that factor, you, you would just look in the picture, you might say, no, you know, why would they think that? 
that we think the same thing about her. Why would people think she was black? Very true. So I, I think it could be done the other way around. Uh, yeah, that's kind of an interesting topic. No, but that again goes back to our belief systems and how so many times we, even though we see something that doesn't look right, that the person is telling us and we believe them and, and the background and even people they might be introducing to us. And it happens in business and things all the time, relationships too. Mm -hmm. People portray themselves one way. Our, our eyes and ears and that are telling us this isn't quite right, but yet we end up believing it and then afterwards find out you know, been duped. So. Mm -hmm. Also, um, with Rachel, she she's kind of, well, her parents have, her, have come out to the public and said that, of course, she's their daughter and that there's quite a few lies that she's put out there, such as saying that a black man is her father and and um, apparently she had her one of her younger adopted siblings was black, um, taken away from her parents, and she adopted him. Also, um, she said that she drew herself with a brown crayon when she was a child, but her parents also denied that this happened. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just a, a mixture of lies and... and there's definitely a credibility gap, you know, their, her parents, we saw that, mm -hmm. uh, where they came out and said that, no, she didn't do that when she was younger, when she's five with the brown crayon, you know, mm -hmm. drawing herself that way, and she said she does. But I mean, people would now tend to believe the parents over believing what she said because yeah. she's lied so much uh, here, you know, recently and in the past. So you really wonder how much of that really was real in her childhood, how big of a deal that was in her life, and when she kind of just decided maybe to, that it would be an advantage to her. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's a train of thought that would say at some point, I, I personally think that could have been where she said, well, this is going to be a real advantage to me to portray myself this way. And she mm -hmm. may have related to to it and everything too, but at some point she decided that it was worth being deceitful and worth even lying about it, you know, maybe to get positions and things. I think you were going to bring up too, though, that she might have got that position even without it, even though she seems to think... Yes, um, she would have. She didn't give herself a chance to, even as a white woman, just be a white woman and, you know, go for that role. She attended Howard University, which is a historically black college, but, I mean, even with that she kind of had some trouble there because she said she, was, she felt like she was being... Um, treated wrongly because of her race, but all of a sudden she just comes out as this black woman. I, I guess it's after she graduated college, but I think she would have eventually gotten that role if she wanted it. Yeah, and, and a good point there too. Yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, calculated. It's not, I, I believe kind of that it was calculated and that she went that way. And she could have definitely, as you mentioned, probably gotten that role anyway if she really was a, a good advocate of it. And exactly. And she able to raise money, which fundraising is a lot of it. And that other person we saw in the TV that was uh, Caucasian, mm -hmm. who was a, a president of one of the associations, chapters. chapters. Yes. Um, so obviously the person wouldn't have to be, uh, you know, African American there. Uh, so she might have been able to do the same thing or even better, you know, just being herself and just mm -hmm. showing that she really cared about the cause and thought it was a worthy cause and so on and so forth. Initially when I first told Edward about it, we were in Japan and I started laughing because at first he didn't First I told you, and you thought it was real. And well, then, this is because you were presented as so real, and then I kept looking at the picture, and then you started kind of laughing. Oh, come on, you're just pulling my leg on this. This isn't real. I <laughs> can't believe it's real, actually. <laughs> well, I thought you were just joking with me. It's very real. Well, um, all I can say is hopefully everything works out for Rachel Dolezal and her family, and this mess comes to an end, hopefully. Now I hope they stop all this media and everything, and it's, I think it's already been almost given too much attention. If it's a springboard, I suppose, to uh, other issues, but it kind of cheapens in a way, and there was a lot of people that were upset with the transgender issue itself, you know, to compare that to that and say that this is a condition to mm -hmm. kind of legitimize it and everything. Yeah. And I don't think that's right. That's Caitlyn certainly. Jenner just came out. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, uh, yeah you know, in, in ways it's good. It's good people, if they can kind of become who they want to become, and if it really does make them happy and feel, feel, feel more fulfilled, you know, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, it's not hurting someone else. I think it's just when you go to the lies and deception and, and things where you've kind of crossed the line on it, so. Yeah, Rachel Dolls all has kind of spun a whole way with those, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully everything works out, but on that note, we will return.